this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster, Stell, here with Bill Clement. We have special guests Robert F. Kennedy Jr., billionaire Jeff Hoffman, Mike Golick, Tom Flores, John Stockton, David Meltzer, Jim Tunney, Roger Craig, Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hayne, Kevin Green, Brian Erlacher, Jim Jeffco, Rod Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker, Brett Saberhagen, Rich Cho, Marky, Charles Smith, Danny McLean, Yank Barry, Grant Muir, Paul Dvorsky, President of the Vegas Golden Knights. It's George McPhee. Len Kamarowski, CEO of Cavaliers. Boy, Green. Mickey Suda. Art Steele. Don Beebe. Ken Sullivan. Tom Dreesen. Pat O'Connor. Alan Glist. 43 Tony Awards. Walt Harris. Mike Crawford, President and CEO of the Hall of Fame. Louis Viola, President. Paramount Famous Production. Universal Worldwide Home Entertainment. Universal Studios Home Entertainment. Glenn Berman. Randy Funk. The professor. Dr. Tommy John. Dave Roberts. Pat Williams. Brandon Schneider. Henry Bibby. Mike Bibby. Donaghy. Dan Hughes, Marcus Johnson, George Lynn, Larry Sanders, Steve Berlander, Dr. Jen Welter, Steve Lavin, Gus Perron, Craig Colquitt, Paul Shortino, Des- My life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson, Jason Hook, guitar player for Five Finger Death Punch, Craig Bartok, lead guitar player, songwriter for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band Heart, Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports circuit. Vinny from the Bronx Wanderers. Mark Schulman, drummer for Pink Share, Velvet Revolver, TV Nicks, Cheryl Crow, Simple Mind, Richard Mark, Aaron Fink, Breaking Benjamin, Jason Hartlett, drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent, Matt Starr, drummer for East Fraley from Kiss, rock star Todd Kearns, Phil Buckman, the bass player in the rock band Fuel, Dave Laurie, Neil Donnell from the band Chicago. This is Brad Gillis from the band Night Ranger and Philip Bailey. Reasons, the reasons that we yeah. Eight-time Grammy Award winner, top 100 greatest drummers of all time, Kenny Aronoff with John Fogarty, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Elton John, Stevie Wonder, Dave Grove, Joe Walsh, John Mellencamp, John Deddy, drummer for Player, Anthrax, Testament, Volby, Mitch Malloy, and lead singer of Great White, Pete Thorne with Chris Cornell, Melissa Etheridge, Rob Mount, drums with Lou Graham, Philip Schaus, I play guitar with Except, I play bass guitar for Ace Fraley, Todd Morris, the offspring of Todd. Hi, Dennis. The Doors. Eric Aldenius, they're from Billy Adams. Red Jones, bass player for Vontae. Phil Hart. Fuel. Michael Shaker Group. Brian Trock. Scotty McClellan. Chris Christian. Four-time Grammy Award winner. Heidi Merrill. Vince Van Patten. Daniel Negreanu. Greg Fossilman Raymer. Billy Hayes. Foz Davis. Rashawn Phillips. Dr. Christian Willemeyer. NASA astronauts. Mike Malay. Anthony Davis. George Stark. Dwayne Starks. Brian Mitchell. Rick Upchurch. Willie Rofe. Jim Fossil. Chief Schrader. Pepper John. Zandre Bad Moon, aka Rise. Brian Jordan. Bill Romanowski. Dwight Hicks. Jason McKee. Michael Keller. Fred Mitchell. Tim Rando. Tom Brenneman. Barry Katz. Brad Williams. Dean Edwards. Emmett Short. Jason Acevedo. It's Christina Smith. Bruce Nahan. Lee Haney. Rick Barry. Cowboy Ninja. Lance Pekas. Anson Williams. Don Most here. Kevin Sorbo here. How- yes. Dr. Peter McCullough. Damian Jackson, ex Navy SEAL. Margaret Carey. Tinkerbell. Stephanie Stuckey, CEO of Stuckey's Corporation. Bruce Perlow, one founder, Marijuana Inc., Medical Marijuana Inc., Hemp Inc. Ronnie Nunn. Bellagy Henderson. Jack Llewellyn. Ford Psychologist. Susie Hellmaker. Alexander Bardo Pinto. Bill O'Brien. Brad Server, grandson of Curly Howard from the Three Stooges. Chris Kemper. Aaron Ron. Dark Kushner. Jose Rio in the house. Greg Olson. Matt Joyce. Jim Lambert. Brad Coleman. You know Burst. Santana Moss. Vance Johnson. Donnie oh, Shale. Larry Bubber. Cole, Eddie Burry, Wesley Woodyard, Dexter Irvin, Colin Fraser, Andrew Ladd, Dustin Penner, Brian Killingsworth, Bart Oates, Don Horn, Ryan McNeil, Devon Kirkland, Chucky Okobi, Jackie Sherrill, Eddie Meter, EJ Speed, Jesse Wooten, Dave Murhar, Pete Todd, Bob Grant, Dan Pastorini, Mark Fleming, Brad Hopkins, Lee Steinberg, Steve Watson, Dan Vincent, Mitzi Dolan, Karen Laurie, Bo Kemble, Glenn Elmore, Chucky Brown, Aubrey Hunt, Chuck Jones, John Nyland, Mandy Van Slyke, Matt Starris, Dr. George Gauthier, Barry Sure. Jesse Sapolo, Dana Stubblefield, Jeff Rago, Jeff Jagger, Gino Toretta, Jim O'Brien, Gary Justin, JT Thompson, Jim Everett, John McLaren, Brad Boone, 
Mel Stottlemyre. Alan Massengale. Francisco Dawson. Kurt Sandoval. Matt Gracie. Bailey Brom. Leonard Marshall. Gary Reasons. Doug Plank. Everson Walls. Jim McNally. Shemmy Shem Beckler. Kurt Walk. Leroy Irvin. Dickie Wood. Tyrone Poole. Alicia Thompson. Chris Duhonker. Scott Petrak. Bruce Crampton. Bush Bear. Joe Coff. Kristen Rhodes. John Jusco. Mayor Carolyn Goodman. John Lee. Mayor of North Las Vegas. Amy Wilson. Nick McKay. Voice of Salem Saber Hagen. The talking cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The father of the first family of drag racing. John Ford. Ricky Stenhouse. Ben Brost. The voice of stock car racing. Robbie Wells. Seeking the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. Jim Strasser. Founder and CEO of Cali Strong. The California Sports Company. CEO of uh, LA Gear. Nike. Oakley. Quicksilver. Owner partners of Converse. Shea Hillebrand. Carl McDowell. Jamie Baker. Carlos Munoz. Darius Casparitis. Dominic Roussel. Oh, Christy. Emery Moorhead. Kyle Turley. Dave Robinson. Jeff Bryan. Leroy Irvin. Eric Hipple. Mike Kaminsky. Matt Darty. Dan Clark. Nitro. American Gladiator. Manny Sangian. Marlon Green. Emery Moorhead. Ricky L. Kyle Washington. Vince Workman. Brett Lashbrook. Chesty LaRue. Scotty Graham. John Robinson. Chris Dishman. Gary Robinson. Catcher Bill. Ward Brewster. Randy Barnes. Anastasia Valentine. Zero Evans. Big Theo Ratliff. Dr. Edwards. Adrian Goodson. Cedric Tony. Ricky Pierce. Hey, well, Good and Rusty Spindell, Carl Mecklenburg, Mark Curier, Toy Cook, Mercury Morris, Eric Davis, Thomas Hollywood, Henderson, Harold Jackson, Chris Lacey, I'm Eric Bigger, Rich Murata, Steve Lott, Michelle Corrales Lewis, Grace the Beast, Aleem, Joe Cortez, Mark Taffy, Chris Burr. Caleb Sweethands, Plant, Bronco, <laughs> Billy Ride. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Today's show is brought to you in part by the American Business Trust Company, helping companies with business strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing businesses with physical locations or on the Internet. For more information, contact them at abtrustco.com. That's American Business Trust Company, abtrustco.com, or call 657-600-1876. For more information, that's 657 600 1876 for more information for the American Business Trust Company. And a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, and those watching on AMP TV, AAMP TV, as well as Hotel Television, and everybody tuning in on Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas, KIOF. Hey, Sonar, let me ask you a question. Out of... Oh, by the way, how was your weekend? No, it was good. It was good. I didn't get a chance uh, to go to IHOP, but uh, I think I was okay. Ah, uh, so your story did not start with... Didn't start with... You were at an IHOP. There I was, at an IHOP with Ace Freely. No, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but I had a good time. He, he was great on stage. Uh, got to talk with Matt Starr. It was it was good stuff. It was it was a pretty good time. Right, Matt, we had on the show, what, last week, right? And, and he's his uh, Ace's drummer, isn't he? He sure is, and he did a fantastic job. Like, it's it's one of those things where he always did the um, the cross, you know, the rock cross where they lift their, their sticks up in the air, you make the cross, and you slam them back down. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he put on a show. All right, you're with Joey That Guy. Joey That Guy, I guess my new best <laughs> friend. Joey, that guy, interesting guy, and a very good <laughs> chef, by the way, too. I don't know if you've had his sriracha mud, but pretty good stuff. I'm thinking oh, about food. It's dinner time. It's dinner time. I can't help myself. <laughs> so, you know, what? You know, we think about what you miss all day long, what, what were the new stories you missed, and so forth. And there's always that clown that's at the bottom of, on that ticker tape, on that one channel that we all know. It's always this story according to this guy and this story with the same guy. It's always the same guy according to Joe Blow, whatever, right? It's always the same thing. I mean, isn't there anything else? Does this organization have anybody else that actually reports for them? Or does everybody report to them and reports reports actually to that guy? Is that how it works? 
I don't know. In, in today's media, man, there's always one guy who does all the work, and then everybody else just says what that one person said. It's just a giant uh, echo uh, chamber. It It is a cluster, you know what the last word is. It just seems like the same damn guy breaks 400 stories a day, which you know he doesn't, but that's their recognizable figure, right? And so I wonder if he actually broke the story of the millions of dollars of jewelry stolen from the home of a British billionaire heiress. Now, Good Morning America actually broke this one. Now, jewelry believed to be worth tens of billions of dollars has been stolen from the house of British billionaire heiress Tamara Ecclestone in London after she left the home for the Christmas holidays, right? And why are we talking about this? I'll get to that in just a minute. Ecclestone, 35, daughter of former billionaire, chief executive of Formula One. There's the sports tie, right? Uh, it was so worth an estimated $4.2 billion, Bernie Ecclestone had reportedly left her home in West London for Christmas holidays when the thieves struck on Friday. Now, reported in The Sun, a British tabloid, no, nonetheless, suggests the estimated value of the stolen jewelry to be upwards towards $67 million. Whoa. Let's just stop right there for a second. 67 million bananas, man. That's mad money. All right, hold on. Now, Ecclestone lives at the property with her husband, Jay Rutland, and the house is reportedly decked out with 24-hour security with guards present at all times. Can you say inside transaction? Maybe an inside job? What do you think? Yeah. Stop it! Either that or Ocean's Eleven is striking again. I, I think so. I think it's one of those things. And so why are we talking about this? First of all, because we can. And second of all, because we're on news stations as well, right? But more importantly... How many times have we seen the players from maybe the NFL or from the Major League Baseball? They're wearing these big gaudy chains and crap like that. And, and you see these this, this jewelry, these earrings, or they're, I don't know, million dollar earrings or whatever the hell it is. And these players are constantly wearing this expensive jewelry on television while they're playing. Is that really necessary? I don't think so. We uh, completely unnecessary. Exactly. We see it all the time. And I guess the question is, why do we have to see them celebrate with 45 gold chains on with basically the Mr. T starter kit? Right. So we, we see this regularly or they have this. They have that. They have to be seen. They have to be seen. Hey, look at me, everybody. I have to be seen. Not only am I in on a play, I'm celebrating when nobody else is celebrating. But now all my gold and jewelry and diamonds, whatever the hell is flashing all over the place. And then they wonder why these people get robbed because they know they have this stuff. Right. I mean, look back even, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, even when Rob Gronkowski was in Minneapolis, where he scored two touchdowns in the Super Bowl, his Massachusetts home was burglarized. And of course, the burglary reported at 615 p.m. on the 5th during the Super Bowl. So while this guy was out scoring touchdowns in the Super Bowl, he was also being heisted. I mean, look, he's not the first one or the last one. Uh, you know, you guys like Reuben Foster. Remember Reuben Foster? That guy's a character. Held up at gunpoint. I wonder if he even actually provoked it. You know, Patrick Mahomes, he was robbed as well. He was robbed at gunpoint as well. And all this stuff, it goes on and on and on. So where am I going with this? We just constantly see people with jewelry. They're trying to flash it. It's like, look. When you buy these things, we already know what's going to happen. Burgled, that's what's one of the goofiest words I've heard. But no, you're right. You're right. I mean, guys like Gronkowski, when he's in a Super Bowl, okay, that's one thing. But this billionaire heiress, whatever, Formula One. All right, so the fact is that there's 24-hour security with guards present at all time. Now, how does $67 million in jewelry get stolen in the first place when there's all that security there? I don't know. It sounds like a big payday for the security to me. Must be a guard, yeah. I mean, what else could it be? Really, what else could it be? I don't know. I mean, do we have do we have that kind of security in locker rooms for, uh, you know, your four major sports or even the soccer? Because the, <laughs> the soccer players actually get paid more than everybody these days. Anyway, folks, we're going to be back here in a few minutes with a lot more here on the Sports Circus. Lots more to come. Watch your jewelry. You never know who's around the corner, folks. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing, and that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have cut him on Sunday he night. He should have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. You're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You, did you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? Is that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the sports circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you in part by Cali Vegas, helping people just like you create and host your very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Cali Vegas can help you with everything you need to get in sitting in hours of traffic like you're doing right now and host your very own talk show in your very own studio. For more information, contact Cali Vegas at 949 445 1119. That's 949 445 1119. Again, 949 445 1119. Or visit them at kellyvegas.com for more information. That's C-A-L-I Vegas.com. And welcome back to everybody listening in on Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas. And our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. As well as those listening in on iHeartRadio and Spotify and watching us on Amp TV, AAMP TV, as well as Hotel Television and everybody listening on the moon as well. All right. A big congratulations. I'm going to send this out to Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe Burrow. What a class act. <laughs> Got to tell you, man, I watched a lot of Heisman speeches. I've seen a lot of those tear jerking moments and so forth. But Joe Burrow, a real heartfelt story from a kid from Nothingville in Southeast Ohio. Very excited for him to get a chance to play for his his home state. Buckeyes from Ohio State. And then they really didn't want anything to do with him. They ship him down, or he ends up transferring over to LSU. And Ed Oldrin, 
good old good old Coach O, man. That let me tell you something. That guy gave him the keys to the castle, and he said, "All right, you go ahead and you run the rodeo." And I got to tell you, man, this guy has not only done what he's supposed to do, but he leads by example. And I think he's got a big, big, big story behind this story. Folks, we're not going to see it just yet, but we will see Ohio State face off against those Bengal Bayou Tigers from LSU. And this is one of those stories where Joe Burrow, I had already written the story. I don't know. I, I talked about it about a week ago when we made our bet. So in our but the Joe Burrow Ohio State game is going to happen. No question. It's the Tigers and the Buckeyes. And this is Joe Burrow's year. This is Joe Burrow's time. Remember, you had two Buckeyes in the Heisman Trophy finalists. Well, guess what? They didn't win. Jalen Hurts didn't win. None of those guys won. The right guy won, and he won by a record margin. I mean, across, I think, every stat that they keep on this. And it was an absolute landslide. And good for Joe Burrow again. Big round of applause for Joe. I appreciate, I appreciate everything Joe Burrow has done for the Buckeyes, but at the same time, I've got Red Vines on the line, and I cannot uh, not let them lose. I got bad news for you, abide. buddy. You're gonna be you're gonna be shipping out some Red Vines to fabulous oh, Las Vegas. Yes, absolutely. Stop whining. It's gonna happen. That's what you say, but I, you, you're right. You you have the story down. It's going to be Joe Burrow. It's going to be the Buckeyes. But I'm telling you, man, you've got the wrong alternative ending to that movie. No! <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'll tell you what. You know what you have? You have the wrong team in fantasy football. You're New York Jets, man. Those guys, Ugh. they just smell. No, I only had Bell. That's the problem. That's that's right. I only that's had right. Bell. They just smell. But that <laughs> they guy, just smell. <laughs> that guy went right up against me, and I'll tell you what. He he picked every single Raven that he could possibly find on the waiver wire and put them up against me, man. He is going to beat me by 100 points in this championship game. Well, see, now I think once you enter the playoffs, you should enter the playoffs with the team that you had drafted originally right. or built, whatever, through your waivers and trades and stuff like that. You should not be allowed to make any transactions during the playoff time. No, that, I believe that as well. But the other, the other thing is, is that I also got some waivers myself. I'm sorry. I, I had to. Oh, so I believe it, but I I had to go against it. I had to go against it because I had that that dumb dumb Ingram from the New York Giants sitting on my bench all season with his broken foot. And of course, they never say they never say, "Oh, he's out. He's not going to play the rest of the season." Oh, he's just, it's questionable. It's always questionable. Yeah, it's questionable if I'm going to play for the New York Giants on Sunday. What are we talking? No, no, but what are we talking about here? There should be no trades allowed, no waiver wires, no nothing. Once you enter the playoffs, that's the team you should stick with. That's if it. you think that's fair, you think it's fair to make deals in the trades or in the playoffs, wrong! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. So what are you got? You you're going into the championship now, right? I am. In fact, I'm facing off against my longtime buddy Jim Everett, and you know, quarterback for the Rams for nine years. And you know, Jim asked me to be in the in the fantasy league. He was also quarterback for the Saints, who are on Monday Night Football right now, too. Go Saints. Anyway, so I face off against Jim, and Jim uh, Jim was undefeated until I don't know week seven, week eight, whatever the heck it was, and then he faced. The Ringmasters team, yes! <laughs> and I ended up I ended up pulling a stunning upset. And then he went on a string of three losses, which is great, but now he's his team is retooled, and he's of course he's loaded with a bunch of Ravens as well. And so for me, I mean, I've got a hodgepodge, and I've thrown everybody in the blender and just kind of come up with a football smoothie. And so the fantasy football smoothie I have, I'm probably about, oh, I'm going to guess about a 50-point underdog to Jim Everett's team. But I think I'm going to be able to come away with a W. I really believe it because somehow, you know, there's always that guy that just you can't beat. I think I'm that guy for Jim. 
I think if we went bowling, I'd be able to beat him in bowling. Okay, okay. You, he's your, <laughs> you, you are Jim Everett's nemesis. Only in bowling and pinball, I guess. <laughs> uh, maybe fantasy football. But certainly not in anything else. I don't know. Uh, no, you try your hand at guy. Pac-Man, I guess. You, you try I to would beat a smoke him score. in Pac-Man. <laughs> I, know the, I, know, I know the ninth key pattern, the 27th key pattern as well on Pac-Man. My cousin used to be an engineer for uh, Midway. He used to make those games. So I, I used to program. So I, I know all the patterns on Pac-Man as well. So watch out. That's it. Well, but if no, you were to well, challenge somebody to your game, it's it's your game. This is it. If it was uh, uh, the Ringmasters special, that, that you were the ringer in that game, what would it be? Oh, buddy, it's pinball. I don't know pinball, anybody okay. else better than me at pinball. I know nobody else better than me at pinball. And I can honestly say that. Pinball wizard over here. Yeah, well, my you know my brother was actually he won the pinball wizard championship of Chicago, and I, and I smoke that dude every time I play him. I crush him, but I I, I really don't know anybody better at pinball. I mean, I could uh, that and eating chocolate. I suppose those are my two special <laughs> talents. Well, there you go. We all need something, right? That's that's very true. Well, what could be better, pinball and chocolate? I, I don't know. Cartoons. I'm, of course, you know, I always have cartoons on the show, too. But really, for me, it's pinball and chocolate. What are yours? Well, you got that, that 12-year-old triathlete going on right now. That's what it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> it, it pinball, yes. eat some chocolate, and then I'm going to get some cartoons in under the belt. What are yours? I'm going to try my hand at axe throwing. I think I wear enough flannel that oh. I would be good at it. Actually, my mom taught me how to throw knives when I was about 11 years old, so I'm okay. very good at throwing knives, by the way. No, that's good. See, I, I wear enough flannel that I would think that I would be good at throwing an axe. That's that's my only well, uh, Is that a skill. prerequisite? Do you have to wear flannel to I throw an so. axe? I think so, and you have to have at least a three-inch beard. I think that's that's it, too. <laughs> All right, you've got the beard down. I know that. But it's the flannel and axe. All right, well, I can understand that, but throwing an axe and chopping a tree down? That's really? it. I, I haven't ever tried. I'm I'm just going by the way that I look, that I think I think with the amount of flannel that I wear, especially now that it's wintertime, the amount of flannel that I wear, I think I would be good at throwing an axe. Now, I did see the competitions for axe throwing and tree climbing in Alaska. When I went there for a cruise back in, what, 2002 or something like that, I do remember seeing the axe bullseye throw. It must have been maybe 80 or 90 feet or something like that. But I remember watching those guys with the rope climb the tree up. You know, they 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 climb the, the telephone poles with those. They put the rope around them or whatever. Well, oh, they're, they're yeah. actually... Right. Well, these guys are actually climbing trees, I mean, literally at light speed. And I, the last time I saw that happen was in Jamaica when I told the guy I was over at the Trial Country Club uh, over in uh, Mo Bay, Montego Bay. And I rented a house there. It, was, it, was, it cost me like two grand for you know four people for a week. And it had its own, its own chef. It's made. It had a groundskeeper. And then it had somebody if I wanted to, for example, go get a coconut up in a tree. They would climb the tree and get a coconut and split it open for me and everything. Wow. And I'd never seen climb a tree that fast in my life, except for the lumberjack guys that climb those big telephone poles, which are actually scotch pine trees in the first place. So, folks, if you look at those telephone poles up and down your street anywhere across America, but for the most part, those are scotch pine trees, right? And so imagine those things stripped down from all the branches. That's what these lumberjacks were actually climbing with a rope around them, and they had those spiked shoes on. You know, they go up those things at light speed. Oh, yeah. No, and that's what I was just about ready to say, too. When you said that they're climbing the trees, I was like, wait a minute. A tree without any branches is a pole. That's why I said telephone I mean, <laughs> poles. So people could identify with it. Come on, man, you're killing me. Over Absolutely. Here. Wrong. <laughs> but anyway, those competitions are fun to watch. And, and I think I watched it over in Ketchikan, Alaska. So, folks, take one of those cruises up there. I don't work for a cruise company. Nobody owes me any money for talking about it. It's just a great experience. And guess what? We got another good experience coming up with Jamie Baker, the color commentator for the San Jose Sharks, in our next segment. Folks, don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on The Circus. You're watching The Sports Circus, and I am Brian Erlacher. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster, Cell. This segment is brought to you in part by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind. Legal Shield can offer traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, contracts given to you that you don't understand. Maybe a hockey man, I don't know, maybe a hockey player cross check you, lost a couple of chicklets, who knows? And you need an attorney, contact Legal Shield for more information. Maybe they can help you out. 213 245 1305. That's 213 213- 245-1305. Again, 213-245-1305. Make sure you ask him for more information on how to become acquainted with what they have. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. And a big welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast to those watching us on AMP TV, AAMP.TV, as well as Hotel Television. And folks, we are joined by a very special guest, and we'll let him introduce himself. How are you doing? It's Jamie Baker. All right, Jamie. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> there it you is. Get a round there of it is. All right, you get a round of applause just for saying your name. Excellent. It's the, fir- it's, it's the first round of applause in a while, so I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Look at it this way. You, you get out of hot yoga and look what happens. Boom. You get a round of applause. You, you know, right? Exactly. That's, that's so, the one. So for everybody, for everybody that, do, Jamie, for everybody that doesn't know what hot yoga is, what is hot yoga? Well, there's, most people call it Bikram. This is actually, I go to core power yoga. So it's, you're in a hot room. There's three different classes I go to. They have, they have, I think three or four different ones. There's like a, your typical power yoga their their rendition of a of a Bikram where there's it's the same poses and then they have a sculpt class which is the one I just went to which is there's push-ups you have dumbbells so you're doing curls triceps you do squats a core routine a cardio so it's basically a boot camp in a hot room it's gotcha. put it this way it's good for the brain it's good for the brain for an ex-athlete that had a lot of injuries it's good for just my core for stretching and the female to male ratio is probably five to one. So I got that going. Oh, for nice. Me too. <laughs> that's an added bonus. Yes, that's a big round of applause. You get the super applause for that. <laughs> that's exciting. Right? So, nice. Yeah. And it's on, you're in a hot room. So there you go. Out of all your training, because you were a centerman, right? Back in the day. And yeah. you played, what, about, fifth, about 15 years of pro hockey? And what ten, was the training different, difference yeah. between what you're doing then and, and the the yoga you're doing now is, do you think you could have lasted longer by doing just the hot yoga? You know what? That's a good question. Training was so different back then. Um, the, it's everything. Technology has changed everything. And in this case, technology and science. So I'm going to combine the two because the, the, the athletes today, I mean, they're new, you know, it's just the blood work. They get their blood work done to find out the exact nutrients and, supplements to use you know so um the training is different now it's not as the guys aren't lifting as heavy as they we used to because you know i had i had a sports hernia um you know it could facilitate some injuries soft tissue injuries but the training today um the priority number one is to not be injured you know, you're no right. good to anybody if you if, if you have a soft tissue injury. If you're, if you're like Eric Carlson battling that you know groin injury last year, he could never he could never recover from it. You know, and he got it in like right. January. So you're no good to anybody. So the first and foremost, yeah, you want to get stronger, you want to get more agile, you want to get faster, you want to get all of that. But priority one is you want to be you know remain injury free. So what I do now with yoga is first and foremost I take care of my brain. I battled mental health issues, you know, goes my ADHD and all of that, but also because of the concussions and stuff that I had in hockey. So I do it primarily. That's the first, my biggest priority is mental. Um, and then the next thing is maintenance for my body. So I get a good workout while I'm in there, but I'm like also stretching. You know, I had, I had, I don't know when any, when anyone ever asked like, how many injuries do you have? You know, I'm like, where do you want me to start the head or the toe? Like which, which direction do you want me to <laughs> right. go in? And, and then we'll go, you know? So back when I was, playing actually i had uh like one of the biggest influences in my career probably the next biggest influence beside my mom my mom and my dad was a guy named mark slater 
Um, it was in college after my sophomore year. So I think it was 1987. And he, I went back to Ottawa. He was, he also went to St. Lawrence university, my alma mater. And he had this program. It was three pages. There was the prep stage, the beginning, there was four weeks. There was the power stage. That was five weeks. You take a week in between off and then there, you take a week off and then you do the speed, the speed routine, which was six weeks. And it was literally 10 years ahead of its time. And I went back. I just, you know, I was so naive. Nobody really worked out that much back then. They did a little bit, but not a ton. So I went and did this. I followed his routine. I was doing plyometrics, one-legged squats, all kinds of stuff that nobody was doing. And I just, I, I didn't become a better technical skater, but just my pure power and my speed um, was a game changer. Like I went back my junior year, and after two days on the ice, like all the like all the players are like, what would you do this summer? The coaches were ecstatic. Every coach is like, what'd you do this summer? So the next summer I did it again. And it's like, that was, if I didn't have that training, I don't know if I would have made the NHL. Like I've had a lot of great coaches, but they had something to work with because of this very specific training. Now, if you take his program and use it today, not many athletes do it. It would be slightly altered in every facet, but, but similar. So um, you know, back then you're, you're, you're building now it's, it's, it's all about maintaining. So it's kind of like the guys during the season, you know, they're, they're not building during the season. It's all about maintenance. You know, you don't want to lose your strength over the course of the, the regular season. So that's what they do. The guys work out after every single, every guy works out after every game, depending on how much ice time and, and all of that. Everything's like, it, like I said, it, there's a whole science behind it all. Well, folks, we're here with Jamie Baker, former centerman from the National Hockey League and also color commentator for the San Jose Sharks. Let me ask you a quick question on that conditioning side. Do you ever think, Jamie, we're going to get to a point where players are going to be allowed to get stem cell treatments during the season for maintenance? Phew, boy. I don't know. You know, that's like, how do you know where we're going? Where's where's the line where it's you know everybody's looking for a competitive advantage but then there's like performance enhancing that's illegal or maybe it's not healthy or they're like no we got to draw the line somewhere i i don't know i don't know where you know like i don't know where the, i don't know where this goes i i know that well, the re- um it, it's you can't continue to make these athletes faster it's it's like it's like just go look at f1 go look at indy car and go look at nascar would they've all over time the cars would get faster faster and then mm-hmm. there'd be a massive crash somebody you know have a you know a life-threatening injury or 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 a driver would die and they would say hold me hold, okay hold on here we gotta we gotta slow these cars down it's a, the athletes are the same thing like how fast can these football players go how fast can a pitcher throw the ball to the point that you can't see it? How, you know what I mean? Basketball is a little different, but you know, hockey, there's, you got boards. Like the faster you go, what if somebody gets tripped up and they go, they go into the boards, you know, you're going to, somebody's going to break their neck, you know, like, so there's, there's a point where you're saying, okay, this, this is fast enough. Like the entertainment value of them getting faster isn't worth the risk that you're putting these athletes through. So I think every sport's trying to, to define that, to, to, you know, determine where the regulations are and to also keep up with the times, if you will. Right. So the reason I asked the question, Jamie, is because I'm very familiar with in one particular sport in the off season, a lot of players get stem cell treatment because I know one of the companies they actually get them from. And so I'm wondering if maybe there's that possibility. That's what brought it out because I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. I understand from a, a rebuilding the problem is, is then there has to be a regulated path of stem cells in the first place. That's got to be league regulated and so forth. I don't know if they can ever totally. get to that, but I, I know they do it in the off season. Like I said, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's a sticky issue. It's a tricky issue, but it's a, it's an issue. I'm sure the leagues talk about, they got, they got a lot of things to have to talk about nowadays. There's so much information yes, out there, you know, it's uh and, and like I said, like, like even in hockey, the equipment is lighter than it's ever been, but it's harder, you know, like that's 
like the elbow pads, it's, it, you know, it's plastic. 20 years right. ago, it was leather. So like if you elbowed somebody, you felt it now. And the, the elbow pads were heavier back then. Now they're lighter, but they're harder. You elbow somebody in the face. It's like getting, it's like getting punched in the, you know, it's like somebody jam- basically having a brick in their hand and hitting you in the face. That's what it's like. It's the exact, you know, it's same thing in football. These guys are like missiles out there. That's why they can't, you know, they, they have to avoid, like at all costs, they have to take away any contact where you're leading with your head that you just can't, and you can't hit, you know, you can't hit, you can't hit guys in the head. Like you just, so I think every league is kind of grappling with how fast everything, hey, listen, everything's changing in the world because of the internet, because of technology. Like if I told you 20 years ago, the hotel industry would be under attack by technology because of a, you know, a thing called Airbnb and VRBO, you'd be like, what are you talking? You'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, anybody who has a, a dwelling can rent it out or the taxi cab industry would be under attack by technology because anyone who has a car can now be a taxi. So it, it's no different than every industry is evolving and changing and sports is right there because it's so, you know, predominant, especially here in North America, you know, so many the fans and everything. Yeah. All right. Hey, Jamie, you're welcome to stick around with us. We'd love to keep you. Just let me know if you want to do it. Folks, we're going to be back here in the Sports Circus in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go and buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you're going to get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from humble origin and they cheat you out of a prize there's a bouncing ball second baseman has the Barbary over the first it's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product <laughs> I Super think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> that boy went a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you you sing about Cracker Jack. I said that I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? and I'm Mike Golick.
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our future guests, our prior guests, our podcasts, and also check out our partners as well. Great charities are represented there for some fantastic causes. In fact, we're going to hear about another another good cause coming up here in just a moment. Folks, we're here with Jamie Baker, color commentator for the San Jose Sharks, a former centerman in the NHL for, I don't know, you played pro hockey for, what, about 15 years? Close, 10, 10 years. 10 years, 10, 15, so hell, you're, almost, you're in double yeah, digits, yeah. buddy. It doesn't matter. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. And there's another round of applause for you for gutting it out 10 years in the NHL, man. That's big stuff. Interesting mix of teams, too. Hey, let me ask you something real quick about, about Kovalchuk, Ilya Kovalchuk. Of course, you know, the Kings yeah. have played placed him on, on waivers. Is that really a potential target for San Jose? No. What do you think? I don't. No, I, think, I don't think so. It's. I think a lot. I, I think a lot of teams are shying would, away from him. I don't know. Well, it, it's it all comes down to cap, right? How much cap space yep. you have. So that's the one thing that's, you know, if you look at the NHL, compared to the other leagues, I mean, there's more parity in the NHL than any league out there, and that's what this cap system has done. So it, if you make a couple of mistakes with contracts, it can impact you because. Now it's 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 going to impact the depth of your team or another you know you may need another positional player that you can't go and get. So, you know, L.A. would love for somebody to pick him up. He could <laughs> yeah, go to get the out minors, of that. You know, like, but but the bottom line is it's you know it comes down to cap space. So and I no nobody's going to pick up a guy that old. Um, right. With with his cap space now, what they could have done, and I'm sure they tried. Is, is to trade him. So you've, you've seen like other teams will pick up a player, but then they're, they're basically, basically in their eyes, they're, they're taking a liability off of your hands. So then you have to give up. It's like, you know, here, LA says, we're going to trade Ilya Kovalchuk to you and we're going to give you, a, uh, you know, a third round pick in 2021. That type right. of thing. So you take, so, and that, that would be to a team that's, you know, not, they're not going to make the playoffs right now. They're in a rebuild mode, so they're acquiring an asset in, in the draft pick to pay for this guy, and it also helps them, depending on where their salary cap is, to, to stay above the, you know, the the, the, the floor. Yeah, there's a minimum salary that you still have to be above. So there's there's floating floating um, salaries out there where teams of you know players aren't playing, but they picked up these contracts for them. If you will, and that's what that's what LA is trying to do with Kovalchuk. Gotcha. All right, let, let's shift real quick. So I know you're on limited time. I want to ask you a little bit about after the Impact Fund. Tell everybody briefly what that's about. So a couple of years ago, I went on a leave of absence. I've been struggling behind the scenes for longer than longer than people want to know. Uh, you know, like 15 to 20 years, ultimately battling uh, what ultimately would lead to is different levels of depression to almost committing suicide on multiple occasions. Um, never really slept, uh, mood disorder, you know, all this stuff. And so I, I got introduced to after the impact foundation and they supported me. Um, and what they, they, they typically their focus, you know, they facilitate custom treatment plans for veterans and athletes with traumatic injuries, traumatic brain injuries. That's kind of, that's their mission. That's their mission statement. Um, probably more veterans than, than athletes, but I knew some veterans that have been through the program, so I've gotten more and more involved. Uh, Mike Dick is the one that actually started this foundation, so it's it's you know it's a it's its motives are great. Um, it's funny that you know you think that you you know you, you you see the need for especially with veterans for PTSD. So that's again again that's like the majority of people that they help come from that. But you'd be surprised at how many ex athletes you know football, hockey, um, that can use some type of treatment because of it's not just the concussions. It could potentially be just, just blows to the head that are call them sub concussions, if you will, um, that on their own can lead to problems. But if you have any biological or, or even environmental factors that lead to mental health issues, then these exact, you know, these blows to the head can exasperate those problems and you may not even realize right. it, you know, um, you know, like it, my my wife, the mom of my children, we're divorced now, but she she knew when when I was playing hockey, like it was one summer I got a couple. I had a really bad concussion this one season, playing for the Sharks, 
And like that summer I would ask her like, what's this? And she's like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, what's this? I was holding something. And she's like, what, what are you talking about? I'm like, what's this in my hand? And she's like, it's a grapefruit. You know? And I was like, that's when she knew, like she'd seen signs, you know, I'd always, I was a happy go lucky guy. And suddenly, you know, I'd lose my temper easier than I used to, you know, my, my focus wasn't as good. So obviously the, you know, some of these concussions were taking a toll and, and all, you know, over time, I, I didn't, I didn't get the necessary, I tried to get some treatment. It didn't work. I got stubborn, tried to, you know, almost self-medicate that didn't work. And then after the impact came in and, and helped me out and basically helped turn my life around and now I'm involved with them. So uh, great cause, great mission, great people involved in it. All right. Well, Jamie, I know you're a busy guy. I know you got to get back to it. You're doing a great job with the Sharks, color commentating. We wish, wish you much success in that. And you're always welcome back here on the Sports Circus. Yep. And we'd love to have you back when you have some free time. Hey, thank you very much. Happy holidays and uh, with radical gratitude. Radical gratitude. Thanks for having me on. All right, folks. Jamie Baker, color commentator for the San Jose Sharks and 10-year veteran in the National Hockey League. Just a great guy. And, and I know he's a busy guy, so we had to let him go. And you know what? So in our having... Guys like that that speak freely about their issues when it comes to concussions. And, you know, we've had a lot of people on with the same story. Pick your favorite sport, whether it's, you know, football, hockey, baseball. And, you know, th- what I want to do is I want to bring on a, a, a ladies a soccer player. And I want to talk a little bit more about the concussion because, you know, the soccer players actually have more concussions per, I guess, per player, per capita than any other sport. Do you know that? Yeah, absolutely. The number one sport with all the concussions is actually synchronized swimming. Imagine that. Yeah. Synchronized swimming. But you're right. It, to hear the same story, but and it's not just the same story. Everybody has their own perspective for it. And the thing is, it's all about awareness. It's about getting it out there and saying, hey, it, it was me. I was, I'm part of that group. I'm not ashamed of being part of that group. And this is how it's affected me. That's the part that I applaud them because they're not ashamed to say that, look, they have done bad things or possibly done bad things or considered doing bad things, whatever, whatever. The point is they've not been of sound mind and body. Exactly. The the issue is, is that there is a lot of mental health issues that are out there and, Mm -hmm. and to turn around and have the courage to say, yeah, I have a mental health issue. A lot of it is probably from the sport that I've played for so many years. But I have that issue too. And and to see that as as a brotherhood and a sisterhood of of having these issues and being so brave about it to get it out there and to support each other, it it's it's great to see that and it's great to hear that so many people are helping each other with the exact same issue. Yeah, that's really good to hear. We have been covering players with concussion protocol and and going all the way back to even with Leonard Marshall. He was just recently on. And Leonard, you know, as a a good friend of mine, a good friend of the circus, said, you know, Leonard was one of the early guys in. It's probably what's keeping him out of the Hall of Fame, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But Leonard was, he was uh, one of the directors or whatnot for that movie Concussion. That was the uh, Will Smith movie, you may remember. Yes, I remember that, but it's good that he's there for spearheading. Yeah, and so you know, offering that input to people that didn't play, people that don't understand it, but giving them a real perspective of it, and that's what made the realism for that film, Concussion. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all know someone who is part of it. Right, exactly. I think you're right. I think you're right. It's kind of like... Uh, well, it's, it's like everybody knows what a blue sky is. You look up when there's no chemtrails, it's a blue sky, right? It's the same thing. But nonetheless, I think that was a really good uh, brief conversation with, with Jamie. I know Jamie, Jamie is going to come back. And, you know, sticking with the hockey real quick here, we've got just about a minute or so left. Big announcement from the Arizona Coyotes acquiring Taylor Hall from the New Jersey Devils for picks and prospects and so forth. Now, they're looking, of course, to end their lengthy playoff drought, which has been quite some time. So Arizona's doing a lot. And let's face it, these guys are really a solid team. And looking up and down that Sharks division where the Vegas Golden Knights are and and so forth, I'll tell you what, 
that is turning into one of the better divisions in hockey as we see it. A healthy Arizona team is a very good Arizona Coyotes team. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for today. That's for Sal. Your nation. Until then, so long, everyone. Yeah.